Here's Clark, a good look from three. She got it. The first three. You know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Has eight points and three assists oh. as... Stewart sets the screen up. Not saying that's not going to translate, because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period. It's good. Kennedy Carter now with 12 points off the bench. You know, I don't know Kaylin. I don't know her from anywhere. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, this is hoops. It's competitive. And this is basketball. The defense to come down and collapse leads to open three opportunities. Spark nudged by. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a big story. But it's a big story because it involved Caitlin Clark. Got a career first. Just step back, going right, I may add. I think you and I both know the landscape that we live in today. And you're playing against somebody like me. I could, I classify myself as a dog. So if you're gonna throw a punch, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna compete with you. We are in a red, blue. The delusional fan base that follows her disrespected the WNBA players. For us to get, like, just constantly shit on. Like, she's third or fourth in betting odds of being MVP at the WNBA. Wheeler finds Clark from the logo. If it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player said it. Okay. Only three to shoot. Gonna have to make something happen. Clark through the lane, reverses it in. Okay. So the kid was set up for failure right from the beginning. Everybody in the league should be ready for it, not just the rookies. And Diana said it best. This kid's in for a rude awakening. Pass behind. Could be the deepest shot we've seen Caitlin Clark make as a pro. Big The criticism is often very one-sided. Caitlin Clark talks her Caitlin Clark is demonstrative. Caitlin Clark. This kid's on the wrong team. She's got the wrong skill set to handle the physicality of that league. Like Caitlin had an opportunity to take the shot instead, drive in and good job here. After it's unfair to the women of this league, to your point, who have laid the groundwork for Caitlin Clark to come in and now take it to the next level. And she's a rookie. We are still talking about competition where you are allowed to get a little extra elbow. I'm playing for the name in front of you. Stephen A, respectfully, with your platform, you could have been doing this three years ago if you wanted to. So understanding that, understanding what that comes with, we all we got, we all we need. Bothered by Rose. Iverson. Oh. How about that? And that steps over to Ron Lowe. What if I told you that the WNBA and NBA are not that different? What if I told you that there was a six foot guard from Iowa breaking records that would take the world of women's sports by storm? What if I told you that Brittany, the merchant of death, Griner, can beat prime DeMarcus Cousins in a one-on-one -on -one game. I'm glad she's that confident in her abilities. She says you'd be no better than the third best host player on the men's team. Ah! <laughs> it's not a walk in the park over here. I'm just gonna use that to fuel, fuel this. I mean, I'm better. It's also a little delusion. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, little man. The female Wardell Stephen Curry. That is what they're calling the number one pick of the 2024 WNBA draft, Caitlin Clark. However, Clark didn't simply wake up one day with this title, she earned it. After averaging 28, 7, and 8 over her four years playing on the collegiate level, many sports fans across the world regarded her as one of the greatest basketball players in WNCAA history. Yet, with this attention and recognition came heavy expectations, diehard fans, and diehard haters. But to understand how we got to this level of polarization, we must talk about the WNBA. On April 24th, 1996, four days before my birthday, well, I wasn't born in 1996 though, unfortunately, I'm not that old. The basketball world would change as the WNBA was created, sparking their We Got Next campaign, preparing new fans for its anticipated start in the following year, 1997. The only problem was, there were hardly any fans. Since 1997, many NBA supporters and basketball lovers were never able to understand the WNBA. They couldn't get past the basic miss layups, the slow style of play, and the unathletic players. Unfortunately, this meant that fantastic players like Maya Moore, Candace Parker, and Diana Taurasi never received the shine from the media they rightfully deserved. There were rare spectacle moments for the casual fans to enjoy, like a LeBron James fast break dunk or a Steph Curry three-pointer from the Warriors logo, resulting in empty arenas and practically free seating. Until 
there was an opportunity for those rare spectacle moments. A young woman from Oregon, Sabrina Ionescu, fascinated fans with her all-around game. She could pass, rebound, and defend, but most importantly, she could stroke that dang cuzzo. Sabrina pioneered the Curry-like long-range excitement for women's basketball. After nearly averaging a triple-double in her senior season of collegiate basketball, she was drafted first to the New York Liberty in the 2020 WNBA Draft. The hype was real around her and basketball fans loved her style of play, as the media came knocking to finally cover the WNBA. But at what cost? Well, it actually cost both the players and the fans. Star players that have been dominating the league but didn't get their shine were upset. Diehard WNBA fans were quick to talk down on the new casual fans. And casual fans were simply irrational, at times acting as if Sabrina was the best player in the WNBA. The media focused on her and the Liberty, forgetting that there were other teams and players involved too, and eventually, the hype died. Until this white, cold-blooded, sharp-shooting, corn maze Iowan decided to shoot the ball from wherever she had a clear view of the rim, yell green FN, word for word, without the acronym, and tell you about it after. Quickly, people were saying that the Pistons needed Clark, which they might at this point, and were anticipating her arrival in the WNBA. But remember what I said about the hype around Sabrina? Imagine that, but 500 times worse with a sprinkle of racism for a bit of fun. Clark's fans flocked, try saying that three times fast, to say that she would win MVP in her rookie year and embarrass all WNBA players. Clark's haters said that Angel Reese is better than her and people won't admit it because she's black. WNBA players felt disrespected and talked about how it would be hard for Clark. Clark's fans then would go on and bash those players. And now we're here. Deja vu? Clark, quite frankly, has had a disappointing start to her year statistically. While she is averaging 16 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 1.5 steals, and 1 block a game, she is shooting 37% from the field and 32% from 3, with 5.6 turnovers a game. Also, recently she just had a 7.7 .7 turnover game and I'm sure these numbers have changed. Moreover, she has the 10th highest usage rate in the league, yet has been very inefficient. That is expected though, she is a rookie, while it should be expected. But the media and Caitlin Clark fans did not allow for her to simply be a rookie. They forced her to be the best player in the league in year one or bust. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Even now, after being left off of the women's US Olympic team roster, her fans and the media seem to be blind to her flaws. This is the problem. Fans are not allowed to form an honest and justifiable opinion on her level of play at the moment because the media markets her as a superstar in the WNBA. While she is well on her way, and while I believe her time will come, these expectations have simply been unfair to her as a rookie to the point where people are loving her struggles and others refuse to be honest about them. Oh, and it doesn't help that the WNBA wants to make a point out of Clark in proving that their league is no walk in a park. There's a huge target on this kid's back. I thought Cameron Brink said something really smart. Now they're expecting this rookie class to be perfect. But in doing this, casual fans have called out professional basketball players for being competitive. Would they do the same for guys in the NBA? But let's get to the main point of this video. The WNBA is at the same point right now that the NBA was when they had Magic and Bird. The two were superstar players and saved the NBA from going out of business from a lack of support and finances. But the only way this happened is through the media being honest, fair, and open. The rise in Magic and Bird opened up the world to great players such as Dominique Wilkins, Dr. J, Sidney Moncrief, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and more, while laying the foundation for future players like Michael Jordan to carry the torch of their popularity. Magic and Bird saved the NBA because it allowed the media to highlight the NBA. The WNBA is not doing this. Instead, they mainly post Indiana Fever games, which yes, is the cash cow. But what about the other teams? What about Aja Wilson? What about Stewie? What about Sabrina who is living up to expectations? What about Jewel Lloyd and Dierica Hamby? What about Dewana Bonner, Lyskin KD, and Alyssa Thomas? What about the superstars of the now? The WNBA media needs to use this newfound popularity. Instead of increasing the pressure on Clark by refusing to show her lowlights and fueling the polarization, whether racial or simply salty hot Cheeto eating haters, post the whole WNBA. Show off your talent. Allow Clark to grow into the superstar that she will become. Oh, and make money.